Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. So obedient, so attentive, thank you. Um, <coughs> well, welcome to the closing plenary of the 2014 conference. Uh, when I stood up here yesterday morning, seems a, a very long time ago. I'm sure for some of you it's been uh, very educational. For some of you it's been very uh, stimulating uh, physically, uh, trying to get up in the mornings to actually come to the uh, sessions, but I hope you found them all very interesting. Um, and on that point, could we please ask you to fill in your evaluation forms and return them to the uh, front desk on your way out? Or alternatively, uh, do please fill them in online on the Cell Training International website. Uh, closing plenary, uh, I'll now hand over to uh, Paul Bishop, uh, Race Director for Cell Training International, to commence the awards ceremony. Thank you. Your Excellency, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, captains, friends, uh, it's my privilege as head of race director uh, to um, open up the awards, annual award ceremony, uh, by inviting Robbie Crow, chairman of Sail Training International Youth, to come up and award the first prizes. Uh, fittingly, the first prize is for uh, the young cell trainer under 26, awarded to a professional cell trainer under that age to encourage high-performing individuals who deliver cell training to young people. This young man first sailed as a trainee in 2010 on that race. He went on to do the subsequent races in 2011 and 12. In 13, he was offered a job as a bosun on a Class B vessel. He attained his RYA day skipper by the age of 17 to begin his professional qualifications, which he is now well down the road. His enthusiasm uh, and source of encouragement for young people was absolutely motivating and inspirational. He also had the challenge of being dyslexic but that hasn't stopped him achieving his qualifications and um, being a first-class navigator. He's not here today, but we would like the uh, secretary of the Swan Trust, Peter Campbell, to accept the award on behalf of Scott Sanderson. Now the cell training volunteer of the year under 26. Um, the, the winner, she is only 19, but she's become one of the foremost members of her NSTO and is currently serves with STA Youth Council. She's a veterinary student, but a keen dinghy sailor, and she sails regularly on her national cell training vessels. A role model for all, hardworking and well-deserved for Marta Martins. Thank you very much, Robbie. And now can we invite Doug Prothero, Chairman of Sail Training International, to award the following prizes. Uh, the Boston Teapot Trophy was first awarded in 1964. And it's awarded to the ship that's traveled the greatest, sailed the greatest distance, in 124 hours. 
Uh, don't ask me why it's 124 hours. That's just lost in the midst of time. Something curiously British, I think. Anyway, <laughs> it's um, absolutely a real privilege, uh, particularly this year, to award it to a vessel that's achieved a record 1,458 nautical miles in that time. She's won it before, well-deserved, a record since it's first introduced in 1964, Satrab Lenkor. And it's And if we could invite Anders uh, Lekvin, General Manager of Stadthard Lemkul, to come forward to collect it, please. That set the bar very high. Let's see what you can do, Christian Radic. <laughs> <laughs> now the greatest um, loyalty award goes to the vessel that in the opinion of the trustees, directors, volunteers of the Race Management Committee that has proved great loyalty over the years by entering many tall ships races and regattas. This vessel did two races this year, the full tall ships race, and then just with two individuals sailed it to Falmouth to compete in the Falmouth to Royal Greenwich tall ships regatta. A vessel that uh, is pretty quick, but this award goes to her loyalty and from Belgium, oh, well, let's get the right one, huh? From Belgium, Tomedy. Dirk, please come forward. Well done, Dirk, and his terrific crew. Now, the newcomer, uh, there's nobody here, I understand, to accept this award, so this award will be presented at our Naval Attaché's reception in London in January. But uh, the newcomer competed in the Black Sea Tall Ships Regatta, the SCF Black Sea Tall Ships Regatta, will this year go to Ra Nawad from Pakistan. And now back to the annual awards. To the Sail Training Volunteer of the Year. He's been a member of SCA Germany for 30 years. He's always been engaged in training for young people. He's reached a venerable age of 80 years old, but is still in full action. He's established workshops. He teaches traditional skills to volunteers and sailors of the SDA Germany ships. He teaches volunteers dependability in cases of emergencies and accidents. Uh, he's committed so much to Sail Training Association Germany, to young people, to sail training throughout his decades. From SDA Germany, this award goes to Jochen Garn and Volker Klosa and Lena Mackler, would you kindly come up to accept this award on his behalf? <laughs> And 
Janelle, the cell training volunteer of the year, um, who's been in cell training and completely dedicated to young people, particularly those who are less advantaged in society. He set up um, a trust, a charity, back in 1973. He's dedicated his life. He's a solicitor, but he's dedicated his life. Uh, around that time, he's never drawn a salary. Since then, he's got an amazing achievement of not just filling boats of literally thousands of young people, very deserving young people, but he's also was behind a project to get the beautiful cutter Pegasus built uh, a few years ago. Uh, this is going to this award is going to Dick Lloyd of the Island Trust and could James Stevens, chairman of the Association of Sea Training Organizations, collect this award. And now to the um, Vessel Operator of the Year Award, now for smaller vessels, going to, awarded to a sail training organization um, that demonstrates excellence in innovation and best practice for sail training for young people. This organization is um, a, a Baltic-based organization that um, was set up, this replica vessel was built in 1988 dedicated to sail training for young people. It's got a fantastic uh, sail training program. Um, she's got a great educational, she's a great educational platform and um, also a competitor in the races, a regular competitor when we're in the Baltic. Focus for young development for young people. This vessel is from Finland from the Orland Islands, from Albanus. And could Alan Palmer please collect this award? Wow. <laughs> you weren't expecting that. <laughs> Okay, and congratulations to everybody else here in the room who are, are involved with Albanus. Congratulations. Now the Vessel Operator of the Year for larger vessels. Um, she's used for, this vessel is used especially for sail training trips for students and other young people. The crew consists of volunteers who instruct the trainees in traditional seamanship and the vessel operates in the Baltic, North Sea, Atlantic Ocean. Uh, in 2013 and 14, she undertook several extraordinary sailing sail, sail training trips entitled the Sea High School, uh, taking 26 scholars, five teachers, volunteer crew from Hamburg to the Caribbean. They had lessons on board until she sailed back to Hamburg in May. She is currently on her way back to the Caribbean for the ninth time in succession. Uh, from Germany, Johann Schmidt. And please, <laughs> Lena Makler and Volker Kloser, if you could come up and accept the award. to go. The Yanka Bilak Medal is to awarded a, to a person who has made an outstanding contribution to international friendship and understanding, one of our core messages in our events. Um, 
this year we have two medals to present. So the first one, um, it goes to a captain who I had the particular pleasure of meeting back in 1986 as I was a fellow captain. It was his first event. He brought his sail training vessel, first time, first sail training vessel from that country to Newcastle for the start of that tall ships race. He continued to enter the tall ships races on a regular basis, and he was considered by many, not least Yanka Bilek herself, to be the uh, consummate professional mariner and also ambassador for his country. Subsequently, he's been a project manager, host port project manager in Bulgaria. And I don't think he's here today, but Toma Tomak. No. Okay, we will uh, find a suitable uh, occasion to award that for Toma Tomak. Now, the second Yanka Bilak medal goes to a partnership, the first time it's been given to a partnership that many will hear today, will recognize as contributing enormously to sail training, tall ships races, international understanding and friendship. One half of the partnership is perhaps best known internationally as a renowned naval architect who designed many successful tall ships uh, from around the world, the UK, Australia, Malaysia and India. His involvement with the tall ships goes further back than that, and he was one of the first uh, architects of the rules rating, which is so loved by many of you who take part in this race. Uh, the other half of this partnership, and I use the term half advisedly, because she was also deeply involved, deeply knowledgeable, quite an expert in her own right. She also had great um, PR and journalistic skills and uh, Sail Training International or International Sail Training Association as it was there, uh, benefited enormously when she was the editor, editing manager of the Torship News then. It goes no surprise then, many of you will recognize this award goes to our friends who can't be here today, Colin and Rosemary Moody. Max, you're going to have to get somebody else to film this. Okay, final two. Um, the host port trophy is quite simply awarded to the host port in the tall ships races or regattas in any one year that recruited the greatest number of trainees. There's no judgment there. It actually happened, and in 2014 was another record year with its host port actually recruiting 337 trainees. That is really setting the bar high, and uh, so congratulations to a great team Harlingen, Jan Ryan Arons, please could you come up and accept the award? Congratulations, Jan Ryan, and also all the team. It was very much a team effort in Harlingen. Great achievement, achievement. We come on now to the prestigious Sultan Caboose Trophy. As most of you will know, Sail Training International has a long-standing and unique relationship with the Sultanate of Oman particularly recently through the Royal Navy of Oman's tall ship, Shabab Oman. This ship serves two very specific purposes, sail training for the naval cadets and others, and importantly, also as an ambassador for the Sultanate.
to continue these important commitments long into the future, a new and much larger tour ship, Shabab Oman II, was launched this summer and comes into service this year. The original Shabab Oman, that is now retired, has competed in 10 of our tour ships races and regattas over the past 30 years or so. And she has won the coveted International Friendship Trophy on every occasion. She is the only ship we believe to have done this, a great achievement. And this, as we know, that uh, award is, is up to the captains, is independently a secret ballot of the votes of the captains and crews. Over recent years, we have explored with the Royal Navy of Oman ways in which our relationship might be strengthened. Uh, this resulted in two important developments three years ago, the creation of the Sultanate of Oman bursary scheme and the gift of the Sultan Qutbus Trophy. The Oman bursary funds and enables 100 young people from disadvantaged, disabled backgrounds to benefit every year from the sales training experience of entering in one of our races. This year it proved financially assistance for 105 young people from 22 countries, mostly from Europe, but also Turkey, Russia, Australia, and China. Sailing with international trainee crews from 26 sail training vessels from nine countries. As an outgrowth of this scheme this year, Oman sent naval cadets and civilian trainees to sail on two ships on our events this summer. A development we, we will continue to grow in the future and we're delighted to announce that both schemes will operate next year and we hope that 10 or 12 young Omanis will sail on the tall ships races again next year. The Sultanate Caboose Trophy is awarded annually by an independent award, um, committee from SDI um, made up of sail training vessel operators and is for uh, either a sail training vessel operator uh, organization uh, for services, for outstanding services to um, training for young people. It will be presented this year by the uh, ambassador of the Sultanate of Oman in Spain, Her Excellency, Kipaya al Raisi, and also the Commodore Yakub al Kamashki. And please, could we invite you to come up on stage and to award this prestigious trophy? The winner of the Sultan Caboose Trophy this year goes to a truly inspirational organization that operates and places hundreds of trainees on sail training vessels each year. It develops and supports educational programs with its National Ministry for Education, and it puts together tour ships events on a regular basis uh, by inspiring and bringing together port authorities, city municipalities, regional and national tourist agencies, business communities, and many other stakeholders.
It has successfully organized five tall ships races in its country since 1982 and has recently contracted with a further two host ports, one for the event in 2016 and another in 2017. This multifaceted organization operates a replica 15th century caravel, which is manned entirely by volunteers. This year it joined the biggest national scientific expedition at sea, along with other sail training vessels, and they recruited trainees and students from across the nation to engage in scientific research at sea, and a thousand people sailed on their ship during this expedition and other short voyages. Not, you know, they're pretty busy, but they also found time to place a further 250 trainees on other vessels which are run by their Navy and other, other vessels. Uh, with a particular focus on including the at-risk, disadvantaged, and minority groups. Um, if you're not inspired by them, after all that, I, I don't think anything could, and it's... Um, it's an absolute privilege to award the Sultan of Caboose Sailing Trophy to Apovella. Ciao Lucio, Pedro Mendez, Rui Santos, Marta, and all of the uh, Apovella team, please come forward to accept the trophy.
I just have a few closing remarks as we uh, get down towards the end of the uh, conference. Uh, I guess the first thing I wanted to do was thank the, the mayor and the city of La Coronia once again for providing such a great setting, starting at the uh, aquarium on our arrival and right through the entire conference. It's been great to be in this setting, this close to where we are, this close to the hotels and uh, a fantastic uh, uh, facility. And I know that uh, most of you really got out to enjoy the city. I could hear that from my hotel room. Uh, I, also, I also hope you enjoyed the conference. Um, I think we had the right balance of inspiration and challenge. Um, the format of having these extended breaks has been important and it's really helpful. It's a really helpful element of it. Uh, on a personal level, I want to thank whoever the genius was that came up with starting at 10 o'clock every day. I think we can round of applause for uh, starting at 10. We have a few people uh, that we want to thank. Um, and, uh, but before we do that, I wanted to make a, uh, an extra um, bit of thanks to our guests here in the front row. As Paul mentioned, we've had the privilege of a strong and ever-developing relationship with the Sultan of Oman over many years. Uh, the SAIL training community is very grateful for your continued dedication and, and vision uh, for what we do. And we're honored to have you here, Your Excellency, and the ambassador, as the ambassador to Oman to Spain. And also to have the senior delegation from the Royal Navy of Oman, led by Commodore Jakob Kamashki. Thank you very much for being here and again for your strong support. I want. I wonder if the members of the boards of Tallship Races Europe, Tallships International, our members group of national sail training associations, the International Council, the Sail Training International Youth Council, and the Sail Training International Ships Council. I wonder if you could all stand, please. Thank you. Um, we, we rely very heavily on uh, our staff, of course, which I'll get to in a moment, but we rely very heavily on a group of volunteers to help take the energy from these conferences and lead them through a year of projects and uh, ideas to try to drive sail training forward. And we count on the folks you see standing to play a major role in that. And uh, I think we owe them our gratitude. Thank you. The overall uh, strategic and management direction is largely uh, driven by a diverse and dedicated group of trustees. I'm going to add after last night, eclectic uh, group of trustees after our dinner meeting. Um, and they're quite dedicated our, our, uh, to the job. And I, I'd like you to stand, please, trustees who are in the room. Thank you very much. Our secretary, Keith, who's normally with us at the conference, uh, is uh, in the process of getting faster. He got a new hip about two weeks ago, so he was unable to join us. Um, you may have noticed that Ron Dadswell is spending a bit more time driving the social agenda at this conference. Uh, that's because he formally retired as a trustee in the spring. And Ron's dedication to the service of sail training many of you know here, has been profound. Uh, I'm quite sure we can look forward to his continued participation. I don't think he's going to disappear uh, from the scene. But I would like you to join me in thanking Ron for his exceptional contribution to the founding of this organization and throughout uh, a good deal of his life promoting uh, youth development through SAIL training. Ron. Stand up, Ron. now the Minister of Fun. That's his official title. Um, 
the, uh, the staff team, which I think most people are here. I wonder if everybody from the staff could stand up, please. Actually, could everybody from the staff come down here? I know you hate this, but please come down here. So this is a, a difficult thank you to, to do because you can't really, oh, and, and Paul Thompson in the back in the booth, and Pauline is back there as well. Um, it's, it's a difficult thank you to do because we really don't have the kind of time that we really need to have to show you our proper appreciation, and I doubt you'd stick around long enough to hear it anyway. Um, I've always considered myself a, a person who knows about a hard day's work but uh, I can tell you that uh, I'm humbled by the work these people do in a year. It's amazing. Uh, the conference, even during this conference, we were doing business for the next four or five years, six years, uh, in addition to delivering what I think has been a very good conference, and I think you might agree, and I just ask you to join me in thanking them for another amazing year. Twenty fourteen has been a a year of achievements in sale training and at STI. But our work is far from done here and we have set the bar, I think, as a result of this conference, even higher. Uh, it's been an excellent opportunity to work with our ship and port partners to refine the current projects we have and to set some new goals. And with each project, we will carefully focus on what's achievable set milestones that we think we can make in the near and midterm, and report back. We have agreed next steps to improve the business case for our races and regattas, for ships and ports, and again, we look forward to reporting back to you on that progress and to having your feedback. Amongst, amongst many of the board's projects, they have prioritized the growth of trainee bursaries globally, and we have already started to make great strides in that direction. We count on and look forward to, as I pointed out, the strong group of volunteer base that we have, and we could always use more help. So if you think you have the time and the energy to get involved more than you are now, we would love to hear from you. I just have a couple of small housekeeping notes uh, before I pass you on to uh, someone who's going to give you some closing remarks, the final remarks of the conference. Um, just a reminder from the opening plenary that our 2015 meeting schedule is slightly different. We will have a host port seminar in the Tall Ship Races series in Aalborg as part of our summer race series, something we haven't done before. And we will have our next conference in Quebec City in January 2016 together with Tall Ships America. It's a great format and an amazing location for a conference. Uh, pack your warm clothes. On a related note, Special thanks to Quebec City for sponsoring tonight's gala. Um, and I just have a couple things uh, for you to know about that. The, comp the gala is here in this building. Um, and its uh, drink reception starts at 8 o'clock. And you need to bring your invitation with you. you. You would have received it in your welcome pack. I wonder if you could join me in welcoming Christine Chesterman of the STI Youth Council to give the closing remarks of the conference. Christine. stand closer okay um, hello and I hope everybody's enjoyed the conference um, first of all I just like to thank Doug for all of the hours that he puts in uh, we some of us may only see him once a year but uh, he puts in absolutely a countless countless amount of time towards making this conference and everything at STI a success so. <laughs> thank you very much Doug um, so uh, I'm not, not much for public speaking, and I've been told by my friends that if I was nervous today, I should just pretend that you're all a bunch of unruly teenagers and maybe make you play an icebreaker game. 
or something. Um, but essentially, um, we come here every year to celebrate our love of sailing, our love of the sea, and our joy of watching young people develop in a unique environment. Uh, we're a community that has quite close bonds, even though we're separated by miles and by oceans, um, and even by who we are. There's such a variety of people at conferences here. Um, but there's something about going through hell and back on a boat that brings people together. And uh, just the full experience of being on board for a single week, you see the best and the very worst of someone, and you love them anyways. Uh, when, your love mate, when your shipmates <laughs> love and support you, you know it's for yourself, and I think that's really the magic that happens on board. Oh, I don't know what's happening here. It's kind of freaking me out. Um, so I, I don't have a very compelling story of how sail training changed my life in, in one go. It was more of a gradual, constant thing. Um, it changed the direction of my life slowly as I realized that sail training had the power to set people free from a lot of the damaging expectations that our world has about who is valuable and who is not. And I was fortunate to grow up uh, in this world, which in many ways is set up for me. Um, my circumstances provided many opportunities, and I often had that hard-to-find thing, which is, it's hard to describe, but it's, it's quite simple, which is uh, to find a place to belong and a place to be esteemed for who you are. <laughs> Uh, but I believe that being accepted like that fulfills our needs <laughs> for happiness. Um, um, but there's many young people in the world who uh, don't have that, um, and they may find a hard time finding a place to be accepted, even within their own community, school, or family. Uh, so I believe that on sail training ships, we have the power to give young people a place to belong. Over the years, I've had the great joy of seeing a transformation take place within countless young people when they find out that there's real community on board. Um, and in the world, leadership is often perceived as the domain of the bold or the privileged, and coping skills are seen as a need of the weak and the troubled. But the ocean reveals these traits for what they truly are, which is universal. The ship assumes nothing, but demands our very best. She recognizes that everybody is a leader in a different way and everyone benefits from good coping skills. Uh, everyone deserves to be loved and trusted and to know who they are, and it's awesome that our ships help us pass on these keys. I feel that anyone who's ever spent any time with young people and paid attention to them knows that they already have plenty of character, uh, and rather than build character, we actually create an environment that allows everyone's existing character to shine and contribute and to be proud of who they are. And uh, over time, I realized that it was really this that we were teaching on board uh, was to create this supportive community where everybody could be themselves. Um, and I hope that every trainee who's on board any of our ships uh, really hears by the end of the voyage that they're great and they're capable and that they're valued for all of their contributions because a lot of times in the rest of the world you don't hear that. Um, uh, certainly, I believe that the people here today know that the primary aim of sail training is not for young people to be proficient sailors, even though sailing is super fun and also a great skill to have. Um, and a captain that I used to sail with would always remind us that we're trying to make better people, not better sailors. Um, and on board, young people discover what they're capable of, and they respect themselves, and they learn how to be good shipmates, which means that they respect and they care for others, which is also very important. Um, even if those people are different from themselves, they learn how to take care of their ship, and they learn how to take care of the other ships in the fleet, and to always look out for one another. So on that note, um, I invite you all to remember the great potential for change that exists on each of your ships, if you're a ship operator, operator, and in the faces of your crews, and on the people that you send to sea every year. Uh, and to remember the importance of keeping sail training accessible to everyone. Never forget what it was like to be a trainee. Um, and every year you learn something new, no matter how long you're involved in this. So this summer I met a young officer, uh, and he said that for him, sail training opened up so many doors. He compared it that when you were a baby, you learned to crawl, and that opens up your world. And then you learn to walk and ride a bike, maybe, buy, maybe drive a car. Uh, but learning to sail was the ultimate freedom. Practically, you can see the world or you can see your country and have a better appreciation of it and a better understanding. But personally, I think it also, uh, I think we can all relate to how sail training has opened up our lives. Uh, and although we don't all do the same thing, some people are teachers, business people, expert traditional sailors, any number of things, um, we're all better off for having been a part of this community. And so in the business of sharing and making new friends and getting something done this weekend, 
uh, we're also celebrating that community. So we may not be able to convert every young person who comes to us into uh, an old salt, but we can help them become a confident and caring member of society, which I think our society would benefit from. <laughs> uh, and it's great to hear that echoed through all of the conference sessions that I attended and from all the conversations I heard this weekend. Uh, at the beginning of the conference, uh, Korean Stuckey said that really it was about helping young people be the best them they could be as opposed to becoming something else. Uh, during the research session, we heard how studies indicate SAIL training really does solidify a sense of self and purpose in young people, and that carries over into other aspects of their life. Uh, at the session on cultural awareness, one of the takeaway messages was that a culturally safe environment is critical to letting people open up and be themselves. And I'm always inspired to learn how many vessels prioritize youth who are in physical, financial, social disadvantage in the world and benefit the most from being included in a place like this. So I encourage you all to go out and keep doing what you're doing and to be yourselves and inspire others to be themselves as well. Thank you. So there's, there's a video starting here, and uh, when it's finished, you're all free.